did sleep like a log. Let's go find Sea Dream. Oh, how is the infirmary even busier than yesterday? Uh, good morning, Traveler and Paimon. Uh, I have a few people here for a checkup, so you might need to wait for a while. No problem. Anything we can do to help? Uh, there's a bit of a complicated situation here. I'm still getting to the bottom of it myself. You have to believe me. I'm telling the truth. Hmm. You're in a medical facility. Keep it down. Please, listen to me. I'm not Gascon. I'm Ui. You're a horrible liar, you know that? We get all your mugshots with our arrest warrants. It's clear as day that you're Gascon. You mean because of the way I look? I don't know what happened. I just woke up like this. Then you guys dragged me in here for an interrogation. I brought you here to figure out what's going on. If you truly are the victim of an injustice, yelling isn't going to achieve anything. At most, it'll delay your vindication. <sighs> All right. <sighs> I get it. This is nuts. Yesterday's interrogations went fine. And now this. Morning, Your Grace. What's going on? Remember the case I mentioned yesterday? The one brought to me by the Mara Chose Phantom? Well, we've been questioning the inmates involved this morning. Every single one of them is claiming mistaken identity. Huh. That's even weirder than what that guy was saying yesterday. The thing is, none of them have been able to provide any evidence whatsoever to support their claims. Questioning them further got us nowhere, so for now, we've brought them to the infirmary. And we thought yesterday was as busy as it got for Seedween. We've compiled their statements. Have a look. Perhaps there's something we missed. Wait. Release? Interesting. The inmates they spoke of in their statements appear to all be due for release today. Hmm. I noticed that too. If that's their plan, they're underestimating us a little. Every serious offender claims that there's someone else who just so happens to be due for release today. And they're expecting us to go along with that. All the more reason to be cautious. Lumberzar, check the release list for today and make sure no one gets processed. We're gonna need an excuse, though. Mm, just say we're out of forms, and that we're furiously printing more as we speak. I'm on it. It's conceivable that our group of serious offenders somehow found a way to switch places with inmates who are about to be released, so they can walk out right under our noses. We did consider that possibility. But I mean, just look at them. They match the warrants, period. How could there have been a switch? Mm, only if they're dead ringers for the inmates due for release, I suppose. I gave you that name list yesterday to assist in your investigation. Did that help? Yes, the inmates' mugshots were attached to the list. The first thing I did was check for lookalikes, and I didn't find any. The only other thing that stands out to me is that their voices sound a little different today. But it's not exactly hard to put on a fake voice. Oh, really? Hmm. What does our head nurse make of all of this? Uh, give me a moment. I think I have a way to confirm whether there's been a switch. I know, it's not time to change your dressing yet, uh, but please bear with me. Huh? Isn't that the guy from yesterday? Uh, this should be Honoré. He has very severe facial ulcers, which require an operation in the hospital at the Court of Fontaine. I authorized him to leave the fortress for medical treatment under guarded escort. Yes, like I told you. I'm not Patton. I'm Honoré. So there has been a swap. Well, I can see what happened in Patton's case. But how do you explain the other inmates? You're not telling me they're... Souls switched bodies. Are you? No, I believe.
believe it was their faces that got switched. The method is a bit like replacing a tooth. Take the bad tooth out, put a false one in. Hmm. And actually, I think I can prove it to you. Traveler, Paimon, do you remember Eric from the other day? Yeah, sure do. Then you can be my witnesses. To start with, please fetch the inmate who claims to be Eric. Yes, head nurse. It's me. You do believe me, right? <laughs> I need to do another examination on you. Same procedure as yesterday. All right. It's the cognition test first, right? So I need to concentrate. Now, try to recall if you can. The last time we did this test, which finger did I hold up? Uh, I believe it was your index finger. Uh... Huh? So basically, last night the Eric who said he saw another him suddenly recovered and applied to leave the observation ward. Seedwin did another test before letting him leave, but that time she held up her pinky finger. Huh? Uh. I don't know about any tests last night. There was nothing to do in the observation ward, so I went straight to bed. Then I somehow woke up in a high security cell. Hmm. Well, in that case, there is a reasonable explanation for the strange events of the past two days. So, what exactly happened? The gang of serious offenders wanted to break out of prison, so they identified a group of scapegoats, namely inmates whose terms were almost up and planned to switch appearances with them. Last night, when Odilon was on duty, they ambushed him and had one of their group switch appearances with him using their face-swapping method. That allowed them to avoid scrutiny from the other guards. Then, once all the other inmates were asleep, Odilon spent his night shift carrying out the remainder of their switcheroo plan. However, they made one mistake. Henri changed his appearance to match Eric's earlier than he should have done, and ended up being spotted by the real Eric. Real Eric came to the guards for help, but we didn't know then what we know now. So we put it down to hallucination and sent him to the observation ward. However, since one of the gang members was posing as a guard, they simply changed real Eric's appearance and had their Eric take his place, muddying the waters even further. Right, because I put Eric on the observation list by then, and no inmates on that list can be processed for departure until I've discharged them. Hence why the imposters had to pull that little stunt to get fake Eric off the list. Yeah, it all makes sense now! The Duke cracked the case! Well, I can't fault the reasoning. But I'm afraid that we ruled out the possibility of face switching very early on in this process. Criminals altering their facial appearance to commit crimes is nothing new. In fact, one of the explicit duties of the Malazians in the Marashose Phantom is to identify criminals in disguise. We carefully examined all the suspects, and there is no evidence that any means of disguise were used in this case. Huh. Well then, how do we explain all this? So far, it seems more likely that the gang stole documentation belonging to the inmates due for release, and are using that to commit identity fraud. Mm. Actually, there is a potion that can completely change someone's appearance. If they use that, even a melazine wouldn't be able to detect it. A shape-shifting potion? Forgive me, head nurse. 
But this is the first time I'm hearing about it. If such a potion truly existed, it would jeopardize our entire investigative process at the Mara Show Save Phantom. Are you certain of this? Yes, I am. But... Please, trust me in my professional opinion as an experienced clinician. At the same time, without any solid evidence, it's pure speculation. Hmm... If we can round up all the inmates suspected of switching places, then have a little talk with both sides, we might just get our answer. Yep. Let's do that. Okay. Well, it was our negligence that meant we had to come and conduct these post-internment interrogations. And I know it's put you out. <sighs> we'll do it your way. Your Grace. Bad news. I paused the releases like you asked, but we were too late. A bunch of people already got processed two hours ago. I checked the list, and sure enough, it's all the people who gave statements. Two hours ago? That's before today's interrogations began. They had this all planned out. So there really was a switch after all. <sighs> Duh. They really pulled the wool over our eyes on this one. We should be able to catch up with them if we leave now, right? Not if that potion is real. They can just switch faces again after leaving the fortress. And if the Marachose's Melazines can't even spot them, we wouldn't know where to start searching. Yikes! So we're at a complete dead end! Well, technically there is one more lead we could follow up on. We were only able to arrest this gang thanks to the help of a researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute. I believe his name is Rawat. Oh? Rawat? Isn't that the handsome guy we met at that skincare promotion? Handsome? Uh, <laughs> maybe from a human point of view. I just remember that he specialized in potions. One of the crimes this gang is charged with is the manufacture and sale of illicit drugs. According to Mr. Rawat, they appear to have stolen technology he developed through his research and used it in their operation. At first, he thought it was a typical case of intellectual property infringement, and he tried to negotiate with them. But once he discovered their criminal operation, he reported them to the authorities. Thanks to his report, we were able to swoop in and arrest them all in one go. What a hero! But that took courage on his part. No doubt. This is worth following up on. As the one who snitched on them, it's highly likely that Rawat will be targeted by the escapees. That aside, since he's negotiated with them in person before, there's a chance he'll have some additional information for us. Understood, Your Grace. My team and I will head to the Fontaine Research Institute right away. In the meantime, please keep an eye on the face switch victims for us. Of course. Um, Miss Morgan, I'd like to come along and help you catch these criminals. Uh, huh? Why's that? Well, I'm the one who discharged the fake Eric last night, so I feel partly responsible. Um, don't say that, head nurse. Your focus was on the inmates' health, and rightly so. We can't ask you to help with arresting criminals. That's our duty. Um, I also have a more personal reason. Potten is a patient of mine, and if I don't get a new batch of medicine to him in time, his condition will get much worse. <sighs> Look, head nurse, I completely understand where you're coming from. But arresting criminals is dangerous business. And if anything happened to you... None of us can afford to take on that responsibility. <laughs> Don't worry. I can defend myself just fine. <sighs> you say that. But still... If I may, Miss Morgan, Siegeween is the one who raised the potion hypothesis. And I'm sure she has far more expertise on the topic than your team. My suggestion would be to bring her with you. And if you really are worried for her safety, then...
Ah, there you go, right on cue. Knew I could count on you. Okay. Well, since this plan has the Duke's blessing, far be it from me to refuse. We should head off immediately. Time is of the essence. Greetings. Uh, sorry to impose, but I'm afraid we're here on urgent business. And we're gonna need you to cooperate. The Marsh is a phantom. Let me guess, you're investigating some more legal research? Not this time, no. We're looking for a researcher. Do you know where we might find Mr. Rawat? Hmm, Rawat. Oh yeah, Mr. Handsome, right? He actually doesn't work on site here very often. There's a handful of researchers in the nearby area who know him pretty well, though. You can see what they know. Just a handful? Paimon figured he'd be the most popular guy around. Well, I guess you could say he's popular, at least on a superficial level. He's blessed with good looks, so he tends to make a good first impression on people. But in all his time here at the Fontaine Research Institute, I don't think he's ever had a single deep conversation about his research with his peers. That's no way to make real friends around here. That's so weird. He definitely didn't come across like a recluse at that product promotion. Oh, I don't find that weird at all. He definitely didn't strike me as the kind of guy who's uh, good at making friends. Really? Paimon couldn't tell. Must be a melusine perception thing. Okay, we should talk with his acquaintances. But we also need to check the research institute for any clues. Let's split up. It'll save us some time. Sure thing! We'll go ask around among the other researchers with Siegeweed. Paimon's suddenly kinda curious to know what everyone really thinks of him. Hey there! Are you in Teep? What do you want? We're here to ask about Rawat. Any idea where he might be? We were told you were pretty close with him. Close? <laughs> Not sure that's the word I'd use. He wouldn't even let me use his patent. Huh? It's been a good few days since I last saw him. I don't know where he's at. Go ask someone else. Um, would the patent in question happen to be related to the new skincare product he developed? <laughs> yeah, kinda. Butterfly do, or whatever he calls it. <laughs> I heard he made a tidy sum off of that one. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Keep going. Most of the other researchers here focus on mechanics, energy, stuff like that. I get why he wouldn't be interested in having anything to do with them. But I'm studying coatings. There's a huge overlap in our areas of research. Why would he refuse to work with me? I bought his product once, and noticed it contains a unique substance that might have applications and coatings, too. If it worked out, I could probably make as much as he's making. Don't get me wrong, I had no intention of plagiarizing his work. I was hoping to get official permission to use his findings in my own research. Followed the proper procedure, it was all above board. I would have had to pay him a license fee and everything. But despite that, he turned me down not once, not twice, but three times. It's like he's vehemently opposed to the idea of anyone else making the kind of money he does. Huh, so is Rawat antisocial, or is this guy just jealous? Well, it doesn't look like we're gonna get any info about Rawat's whereabouts from him. Let's go! Uh, wait, hold on a second. Mr. Antip? Next time you go shopping, you should buy some Buell fruits. Peel the skin, steep in water, then drink. It'll help calm your mood. Huh? Uh, yeah. Thanks. Excuse us, are you Audrey? That's me. What is it? Are you close friends with Rawat? We're trying to find out where he is. Close friends? <clears throat> you mean because I told him I had feelings for him once? I doubt I'm the first or last at the Institute to make that mistake. 
Why would you single me out as a close friend? I should have known, really. Men like him, they just enjoy being surrounded by fawning women. They're not interested in a serious relationship. Okay. <laughs> we were just kind of wondering if you might know where we can find him. Why would I know where he's at? I barely know him, and he probably doesn't even remember me. Ugh, this is getting annoying. Shall we go ask someone else? <sighs> I think she knows Rewa better than she cares to admit. If we leave now, it might be a wasted opportunity. Maybe, but we're not going to get much out of her while she's in this state, are we? She's displaying symptoms common among people in love, if that's what you mean. But I know a cure. It's... curable? <clears throat> oh, we're still no closer to finding Mr. Rawat. Oh, by this point, he could be in grave danger. D danger Wait, why are you looking for him again? Oh, uh, that's right, Tina! The Marichose Phantom said that he's been targeted by some pretty bad people. We need to make sure he's safe. What? How has this happened? He seemed fine when I last saw him, and that was only a couple of days ago. <clears throat> Just happened to run into him, of course. Oh, I see, I see. Well, do you have any thoughts on where he might be right now? Okay, but this is purely out of concern for his safety. If he's not at the Institute, he might be at his mother's place. I heard she raised him alone, that they had it pretty tough financially, and these days she's housebound due to illness. He makes regular trips back home to check on her. Oh, okay. Do you know the address? Nope, sorry. I only found out the thing about his mother because it came up in conversation once. I was just trying to find out more about him, you know, so I could get to know him better. When I told him I had a crush on him, I offered to help him take care of his mother. And yeah, maybe that was a stupid idea, but did he really have to yell at me for it? It's like, fine, I can take no for an answer, but what's with the temper tantrum? Unbelievable. <sighs> These guys only want to show you their charming, well-groomed exterior. They can't stand it when a few home truths shine through. Uh, looks like her love syndrome is flaring up again. We need to find out Mr. Rawat's mother's address. Let's check with the Marishosi officers when we regroup. Cool, sounds like a plan. Sorry to bother you, sir, but are you Bertram? Who's asking? Just some concerned citizens helping out the Marishosi Phantom with an investigation. We'd like to ask you about Rawat's whereabouts, if that's okay. We're told the two of you are pretty close. Not anymore, we're not. Turns out we don't see eye to eye. Oh yeah? What happened? <sighs> the thing about us researchers is, most of us do what we do for some sort of higher purpose. But not Rawat. All he cared about was how to commercialize his findings. He won't even let you work with him unless you sign a confidentiality agreement first. Also, he has better control over who gets which intellectual property rights. How are you supposed to get any meaningful research done working with a guy like that? Now that I've got my own technical solution for my compressor, I don't need to work with him anymore. So that's what Rewat is really like. We still like to know where to find him. Is that something you can help us with? Wait, you're... Yeah, I know you. You're the head nurse at the Fortress of Meripede. All right, then I'm happy to help you if I can. I respect the work you do. Medicine serves the highest purpose of all the sciences. Wow, turns out Sea Dream's got some real clout! Thing is, I have no real way of knowing where he might be. I stopped working with him two months ago, and I've barely seen him since. But if you want my advice, I'd say go talk to the peddlers. There's a few he meets with every other day or so. Maybe they know where he's at. Peddlers? Yeah, back when I was working with him, I noticed he met with them quite often. Wouldn't surprise me if they were involved in some shady business together, because it seemed like they went out of their way to avoid discussing anything in my presence. The little I overheard was about manufacturing and selling pharmaceutical drugs. Like I said, 
He's all about the money. Drugs? Doesn't he work with skincare products? Do those count as drugs? Who knows? I never cared to find out. He's the morgue rubber, not me. Thank you. You've given us plenty to work with. Welcome. Goodbye. And may we both reach new heights in our scientific endeavors. Well, that's all three researchers. Let's head back to the meetup point. You know, Hyman started out thinking Rewak was a handsome researcher with a friendly and cheerful personality. It's such a surprise to learn that his peers have a different impression of him. So, what's your view of him now, Paimon? Hmm... A handsome researcher whose difficult upbringing turned him into a profit chaser with a chip on his shoulder? So, your thoughts about his appearance haven't changed at all? Well, his looks are kind of a big deal. At least in Paimon's opinion. How did such a handsome guy end up being so antisocial? Even with his difficult family background, it just doesn't make any sense. You can't judge a person solely based on their appearance. Head nurse. Traveler. I assume you've spoken with the researchers. What did you find out? Bertram mentioned Rawat's involvement with some pharmaceutical merchants. Do you know if he's registered any pharmaceutical brands? Since he was a whistleblower on such a huge case, I ran a background check on him. Hmm. I don't remember there being any brands under his name. Hmm, how strange. If he was so focused on commercializing his research and averse to sharing his technology with others, why wouldn't he have registered his own brands? Maybe he and his business partners needed to avoid public scrutiny? You think he may have colluded with the gang? Hmm... Well, the crime was manufacture and sale of drugs, and that would certainly be in his wheelhouse. We can't rule it out. Isn't that pretty unlikely, though? He was the one who blew the whistle on them! Most children who come to me with tooth decay have suffered pain for a long time already, but they'll still try to hide the fact that they eat too many sweets. Grown-ups and children aren't so different in that regard. Hmm... If you say so! I saw him when he came to make his report. And I certainly didn't get the feeling that he was the type to collude with criminals. Perhaps it's more likely that they were coercing him. You mentioned that he comes from a poor family. So, it's possible that the criminals approached him asking for academic support, luring him in with the promise of riches. By the time he discovered who they really were, he was in too deep. They had leverage on him, so he was forced to keep working for them. I've seen it happen many times before. That does make a lot of sense. It would definitely explain why he was so unwilling to cooperate with his fellow researchers. No wonder he's so unsociable. He must be on edge all the time with the gang of crooks breathing down his neck. In that case, the situation could be worse than we thought. If Rawat was working with the escaped inmates, they're sure to know more about his whereabouts than us. Oh, there's a good chance they'll get to him before we do. Based on the information we've gathered so far, he was last seen two days ago. If no one's seen him since, maybe we're... too late. Two days ago? So he went missing right after that product promotion! That was the same day he reported the criminals, too. Not a good sign. Hmm. Don't worry, everyone. I believe we still have a chance. Since he disappeared right after blowing the whistle, it's likely that he's gone into hiding. Yeah, he must have been worried that they'd come for him. All the more reason to find him as soon as possible. The only lead we have at the moment is his mother's house, which you mentioned earlier. <laughs> Seath, think you can find the place? Yep. <laughs> when you register a brand, the Court of Fontaine requires you to provide a legal address. The one Rawat wrote down was in the outskirts of the city. That should be the place. Hm. Okay, then there's no time to lose. 
Let's move. <sighs> All right. This should be the house. Mm, I'm pretty sure this was the address. <sighs> okay. I'll knock. <gasps> Sounds like whoever's inside has restricted mobility. Oh, it seems serious. Oh, what's the fastest way to get this door open? Um, break the door down? No, no. I'll handle it. Let the expert deal with it. There'll be a mountain of paperwork if we damage a citizen's property. <sighs> Calm down. Deep breaths. Remember your training. Control your strength. And... It's open! Seath, take a few people and lie in wait. Keep your eyes peeled for any activity around the house. The Traveler, Head Nurse, and I will go inside. There, on the bed, there's an old lady. That's gotta be Rawat's mother, right? She doesn't look like she's in any state to be answering our questions, though. We could try, but she is very ill. We mustn't force it. <sighs> well, doesn't look like Rawat's here. She's the only one we can talk to. Yep. Allow me. Hello, ma'am. Might I ask if you're ever Watt's mother? We are trying to locate him. <laughs> Hard of hearing, perhaps. But does anyone have a picture of a Watt? I have one here. I'd like to show you a photo, ma'am. Is this your son? Do you know where he is? <coughs> Looks like this isn't gonna work after all. <sighs> well, looks like we're out of leads. If Rawat's not here... Things are looking very bad for him. Is it possible he could have avoided returning here because he knew he'd be in danger? Maybe. But if so, where do we look next? Maybe we should take another look at the Institute. Yes, so? I suggest we all return there now. We found a good amount of useful information the first time. But perhaps there's something we missed. This is our last hope. Sorry, officer. But could I stay here for a while? This patient requires some care. Of course. Traveler, stay with the head nurse. You're technically here as her assistant, after all. Also, I'd like some Mar Chaussee members to stay as well, and keep an eye on the area. Why is that? If Erwat knows how serious his mother's condition is, he will return. Got it. <sighs> okay. I'll tell the squad members in hiding to stay put and keep a lookout. Thanks for helping me out yet again, Traveler and Paimon. No problem. But when you say her condition is serious, do you mean... Yes. She is barely clinging on to life. Oh. Let me take care of a few things first. Could you pass me the towel over there? Yeah, of course. I can tell that her family has tried a lot of different treatment methods, including some very expensive medicines. Unfortunately, 
Her condition is so multifaceted that a recovery looks all but impossible. See, Dwing. My mom bets being a nurse must be pretty tough at times like this. Yes. It makes me a little sad. In Amelazine's eyes, a human's birth, aging, sickness, and death are as much a part of natural law as sunrise and sunset. But human medicine can defy that law to some extent. In that sense, it is a science of miracles. That is why I became fascinated with it in the first place. But it was only after I truly became a doctor that I realized miracles don't always happen. Even the greatest doctors cannot cure all diseases. See, Dwing? Well, don't worry about me, Paimon. A doctor's duty is not to cure all diseases, but to treat whatever ailments they can. At the very least, I can lower her fever. That way she'll suffer less, and she might even be able to see her son. Yeah. All the more reason to find Rewat as soon as possible, even if we don't catch those crooks. <coughs> oh, her fever is getting worse. Could I get some hot water? Sure, we're on the case. On the hot water? Sure did. And look what else we found. Judging by this journal, it seems like Rawat has a private lab. There's a good chance he could be there right now. We gotta go tell Officer Morgan right away. Oh, that's great news. But hold on just a moment. The wet towel is ready. I'm giving you another injection. Are you feeling better now? <coughs> it's all right. We'll go bring him back. Please hang in there. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> 